this is working. So I'm showing you now Levine's test of equality of variance. We are going to do it for comparing the incomes of different uh, of the two genders, women and uh, men. So you go first to analyze, compare means, then independent sample t-test. Okay? You have here two options. The first is a test variable and then the grouping variable. The grouping variable is always the one which distinguishes between the two populations. So as I already mentioned, that would be sex in this case. And you also have to define the groups because they are usually coded 1 and 2. If this coding would change, then you would have to change the numbers here accordingly. So you click on continue, and then for the test variable, we said we are going to take the total income of the two. So here you go, test variable, grouping variable. It's very important to select these two uh, correctly, if not, the test uh, would not work. Always a test variable is the interval ratio variable, because we are going to have to cal calculate sample averages as already discussed in class. Okay, now let's click OK and see what we are going to receive as an output. First you have the group statistics table and uh, you can see that there are 797 females in our sample and 703 male. Uh, the mean for females is around $20,500 and the mean for male is $35,000. You can see that there is a mathematical difference of an average of 14,000, which is very large. So it makes you wonder, is this difference significant? Meaning, can you generalize beyond the sample to the whole population? Can you really say that men and women differ on how much money they are making? And again, I'm referring to the whole population, not just what I see here uh, as a sample output. Okay, in order to reject or accept the null hypothesis, you basically are going to have to look at the significances you see in this column. Nonetheless, you see that there are two significances listed, and first you have to choose which is the correct one, right? If the significance is less than 0.05, you can reject the null hypothesis. That would tell you that there is no difference between how much money female or male are making. So whatever you see this difference here occurred due to random chance, maybe a sampling error, and is not significant. Um, what is this? Okay. Now, before being able to decide on these two, you will have to decide if equal variances are assumed or equal variances are not assumed. SPSS by e default assumes equal variances, and you reject this assumption if this significant that you see here is less than 5%, so it would be less than 0 0.05. As you can see, it is less than that, so equal variances are not assumed, and you are on the second row, uh, in the second row, sorry, and your correct significance for the um, for rejecting the null hypothesis is this one, which is again less than 5%, so you can reject the null hypothesis and say that this difference did not occur because of random chance, but is significant. Now let us understand a little bit um, what we mean with equal variance is assumed or equal variance is not assumed. As I have shown you during the lecture, uh, equal variances is basically the assumption that both uh, female and males have the same standard deviation when we look at their normal distribution curve. If we look at the sample standard deviation, we can see that man have a higher standard deviation than women or a higher variance. So we can say that men not just earn higher on average than women but also have a higher dispersion. So in this sample of 703 men we can find very fortunate, well accomplished, uh, high income receiving men but also ones who might be unemployed for example. So the men range from poor to very rich. For women, uh, on average, they earn less than men, much less. But the dispersion among women is also lower. So this means that you will not find huge discrepancies among those 797 women, uh, which is not necessarily a good thing, because you will not find very accomplished women. 
Fortune 500 women, but neither will you find women who are beyond poverty threshold. So based on this, we would assume that equal variances are not assumed. However, you can uh, be sure of this assumption only after you rejected the first assumption of equal variances, which we did, because the significance here is less than 5%. If we go into the second row, and as I already mentioned, this is your second significance you're looking at, and you reject the new hypothesis. You can say that the population of men and women is distinct when it comes to how much money they are making. And that's all. Thank you. Hopefully this was clear.